Okay, friends, what we're going to do now is we are going to continue our little chart from the, uh, from the board, and we're going to take a look at how that repeated application of inflation affects minimum wage over time. So I'm going to start up here. I'm just going to put year. Okay, I'm going to be Sean, and I'm going to center it. Bold italicize, or bold underline. Okay, so it started with 1985, uh, and then it went to 1986, 1987. Um, you know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm going to create two columns. I'm going to create a year column, which is that one that I just described, 1985. Whoops, 1985, 1986, 1987, and I'm going to continue that pattern uh, all the way down to 2015. Because if you remember, that's when the meme was was published in 2015. So you got 85 to 2015. But to tie this back better to the stuff we did yesterday with the savings account math, I want to call this year zero. This one's year one, this one's year two, and so forth. Until we get down to year 30, which would be 30 years past, which is 2015. Whoops. One more year. There we go. Okay. And hopefully that makes sense. Um, it, our inflation math doesn't care which year, it cares how many years. Uh, it's how many times the amount of money is inflated. So we'll come back to that in a second. It'll make sense in a sec. If it doesn't make sense right now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert what's called a text box, which is just a really, well, it's basically just a little placeholder over here. I'm going to say assume 5% annual average inflation. Did I type all those words right? Holy crap, I did. Amazing. I don't usually, I'm not usually that lucky. Okay. So for the stuff, for starters, we're going to assume 5% annual inflation. I'm going to put this over here, actually. I'm going to zoom in a little tiny bit. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this year number instead of just year, if, if that makes it easier to see. Uh, and I'm going to make this gray so we focus on it a little bit less. So we're just focused on the year number. Okay. What I want to look at is minimum wage adjusted for inflation. There we go. I spelled some words wrong that time. Guaranteed. <laughs> inflation. Okay. Bold underline. So we know. We know that in 1985, it was $3.35. In 1986, it needs to be adjusted by inflation, so becoming 5% higher. And what we discovered yesterday was the easiest way to represent this mathematically is taking $3.35 and multiplying it by 1.05. I'm going to, before I press enter, uh, I'm going to put an equal sign, which I forgot to do. Uh, before I press enter, though, I want you to know what's going on here. The 1 means we're bringing the full 335 down, and the 0.05 means we're adding an additional 5% onto that. So at 5%, oops, yes, that's fine. At 5%, the, in, the new minimum wage increased by 5% should be $3.52. Now, this one here needs to have another application of the 1.05 multiplication. So it should be, this one down here should be 1.05 times 1.05. And you might remember we dealt with this yesterday in the savings account math. So before we do anything else, I'm going to actually rewrite this entire set of formulas up here differently. See this one right here? This one right here, the 335? That's totally fine. But what I'm going to write that as is equals 335 times 1.05 to the, and then I'm going to click on the, year, what this is going to do is it's going to raise it to that number of years. Now, when you press enter, you're not going to get a surprise here. It's 335. If you did the extra credit for yesterday's homework, you'll know why it's just 335. But the quick and easy answer is because of the zero exponent. And that's, I'm going to, that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to get this too far into an algebra lesson. But what's cool about that formula is I can now drag that down. 
And it's the same result we got here. Because multiplying 335 by 1.05 is the same as multiplying 335 by 1.05 to the first power. But what's really cool about this is we can continue to drag it down. That would be multiplying by 1.05 twice. This would be multiplying by 1.05 three times. See how it's matching as we, as we drop down? The exponent is matching the year, which is exactly the discussion we had. And double click here and let her go down. We're going we're gonna to inflate this all the way out to 2015. Well, okay. So now we know that 5% um, can't be right because according to what we know, in 2015, this minimum wage should be $7.25. So 5% clearly isn't right. This is too high. This is almost exactly twice too high. So you might be tempted to start up here and take the 5% and knock it down to say 3%. It's 1.03, which is 3%. And then drag that down and see what the result would be. And now we're getting closer. It's 813. I want you, I'm going to encourage you to hit pause right now and see if you can figure out what the average annual inflation needs to be. We know it's not five. We just checked three. It's also not three. I want you to hit pause right now and goof around with this. And remember, all you have to goof with it, all you have to do is goof with this spot right here. If you goof with that spot right there, and then you can drag the formula down, you'll see the results down here. So hit pause, take some time, and see if you can't figure out and try to figure it out, not just to the nearest whole number, but to the tenths place. Okay, give it a shot right now. We'll come back. Okay, friends, let's see. Let's see what you, I, I wish you were here with me because what I usually do is I let folks do it in class. They kind of goof around and look for it. Uh, let's try 2%. 2%, 2%, so 2%, if I drag that down. Uh, two per, okay, okay, so 2% is too low. 2% is too low, 3% was too high. Let's go right in the middle. Let's try two and a half. Two and a half, ah, not quite there, but we're getting closer. It's not quite there, but it's getting closer. Let's do 2.6% up here and then drag it down. All right, 2.6% is almost exactly where it needs to be. It should be 7.25. And those of you that are crazy enough to want to really get down in the mud might want to maybe start messing with, with hundreds places of decimals here. Maybe make it 2.61% and drag that down. And I'm not even going to enter. Yes, I am. Of course I am because I'm me. Ah, now it's too high. Now it's seven seven $7.26. It should be $7.25. Let's stop right now. In the next video, we're going to take what we know about how mathematically these numbers are relating to each other. And we're going to figure out how to solve for this rate right here using a little teeny tiny bit of arithmetic without using Excel. And this is, you got to understand something. I love using Excel. Excel is wonderful. But for something like this, getting lost in the mud like this, you might actually forget what you were actually trying to do in the first place, which was find the average rate of inflation. We got it pretty close. It's close to 2.6%. But in case you need more accuracy than that, this is not the best way to do it. So what we'll do in a minute in the next video is we'll show you a little tiny bit of arithmetic mixed with a little tiny bit of algebra, teeny tiny little bit. It won't hurt at all. And we'll see how to figure this out.